Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. And pack one, pick one, open a very nice one. Pretty easily get to six mana, activate it, start making angel tokens. Probably one of the best rares or mythics in the set. Then looking at the rest of the pack, nothing really comes close. Some of the uncommons are good, uh, Vigil and Baloth is uh, quite strong. Sometimes Blanchwood armor is worth it, but you have to be a mostly green deck, which doesn't come together very often. And, uh, well, open one ridiculous rare and get past the other ridiculous rare in the set. So, I mean, not gonna say no. There's definitely some other good cards in the pack too. Vampire Sovereign's great. 5 mana, 3, 4 drains the opponent for 3 life. Great card. Uh, Dwindle, nice removal spell. Snapping Drake's okay. But yeah, we're not gonna say no to Patient Rebuilding, Hope to Wheel, Meandering River, Snapping Drake, Chaplain, Dwindle. And yeah, that's another very good card, Heroic Reinforcements, as we could see in a previous draft. But that's not the type of deck we're trying to draft now. Although, who knows, we could still pivot into an aggressive red-white deck with the Resplendent Angel give up on Patient Rebuilding. But Patient Rebuilding is such a strong card that it's a very big incentive to stick to blue. There's no great options for a more controlling blue-white deck here. I mean, there's a Dwarven Priest, which is a decent defensive body, gains a bit of life. Leonin Vanguard doesn't really synergize all that well with the patient rebuilding plan of the deck. Plays okay with the Resplendent Angel, but gaining one life is still uh, a few points short of five life. So it's mostly just a 1-1 that every now and then will gain us a bit of life, but it doesn't block or attack very well. Between Vanguard and Priest, I think I prefer the Priest. It's just a better defensive body that pairs better with the patient rebuilding. Yeah, you don't really need to have a very aggressive deck to win the game with Resplendent Angel. Angel can easily be your only creature that's attacking and you can still win the game from there just by pumping the Angel once or twice. So I think I'm okay taking a pretty weak card third pick just because it goes so well with our first two picks, which are both great. There's some reasonable options here too. Rise from the Grave can be a powerful card. If our angel dies somehow, we can get it back. Plus, if we mill the opponent with rebuilding, we can rise from the grave the best creature they have. But there's also Anticipate, which can help us find our powerful cards. There's a Scholar of Stars, and in blue-white we often end up with a small artifact sub-theme. So it's between the Scholar, Anticipate and Rise here. Don't know if we really need to splash black. We would much rather just be a two-color deck so we can more consistently have triple white for the angel's ability and get double blue for rebuilding in time. So taking the anticipate's probably fine. Uh, but Scholar of Stars also a close one here since again if we can get some sky scanners, some pioneers, it's uh, very easy to get some artifacts in your deck. And yeah, speaking of artifact theme, skilled animator is a nice payoff card for the artifact deck turning an equipment into a 5-5 or another random artifact. Plays very well with all the Thopter tokens and Sky Scanners. I would also be happy with uh, Cavalry, just making multiple 2-2 creatures that we can uh, block with. Since yeah, our deck basically has its wing conditions already, Angel and Rebuilding, the rest of the deck just needs to be blockers, removal spells, counter spells, maybe some card selection and card draw. But Animator making a 5-5 can also just play defense pretty well. And here we have a very interesting pick. So normally, Starcrown Stag would be the much better card over Scholar of Stars, not even close. But again, we're drafting kind of a weird deck here where we don't really have to follow the normal conventions, since it's not often that you start with a Patient Rebuilding and Resplendent Angel, so the normal drafting rules don't really apply to us. And we're not a deck that's trying to beat down Tap down opposing creatures with Starcrown Stag, or a deck that's trying to survive until we find one of our two win conditions, and then ride those to victory. And in that plan, Scholar of Stars 
works out quite a bit better, especially given that we already need artifacts for the skilled animator. So we'll definitely prioritize those. So I think we'll go with uh, Scholar of Stars. So this pack is pretty disappointing. Can just take a Tolarian Scholar as a 3 mana 2 3 to block with. It's probably fine. Don't really want a Swift Claw here. Alright, got two nice artifacts. Marauder's Axe is a cheaper one, so it helps us curve into Scholar Stars and Skilled Animator a bit better. But the issue with Marauder's Axe, again, is that we're not a deck trying to attack very often. So having uh, the axe as an equipment doesn't actually help us all that much. We would much rather just have a 5 mana 3 5 that every now and then will be a 5 5 as a good defensive body on the ground. And then hope that the cheaper artifacts come in the form of Thopter tokens and Sky Scanners and the likes. Alright, so now we can take uh, a Cancel as a decent removal spell, or counter spell I should say, but can also serve as sort of a removal spell, can protect our win conditions. And we wield the Mandarin River, so that's nice. Bit of mana fixing is always welcome. I guess we'll take Inspire Charge, but I doubt we'll play it. And there's a chance we want a Sea Serpent. Alright, so the first pack went pretty well. All we're missing is a bit of removal. That's the only thing we don't really have. So getting a few late Luminous Bonds would be pretty nice here. And what do we open? Not all that much we're interested in. There's a Dragon Sword, which is just a glorified Manolith in most decks. No real dragons that we're hoping to get in blue-white for the most part. Uh, there's a Bone to Ash as an expensive Essence Scatter that also draws a card, so it's a bit clunky to keep up, a lot more difficult to keep up with an Essence Scatter, since with Essence Scatter you can often have these play patterns where you make a play keeping up two mana for Essence Scatter, and if you have to keep up four mana for Bone to Ash, there's not many plays you can make. Plays well with Anticipate and Cancel, but that's about it, don't have any other instance. Marauder's Axe could be just a cheap artifact, even if we don't equip it often to enable some synergies, but there's a good chance we wheel it anyway. There's also a good chance we wield the cancel, so I think I'll still take the Bone to Ash, but there's even a chance we don't end up uh, playing it. Alright, now there, there's some interesting cards. Volcanic Dragon's a great one, but definitely not gonna take it here. There's Psychic Corrosion, which could also be a win condition by itself. Plays well with our Patient Rebuilding, of course. Definitely don't need more than one Corrosion and one Patient Rebuilding as far as win conditions go, but then we can dedicate the rest of our entire deck to just protecting our life total. Omen Speaker would be great as just a nice defensive body, giving us a bit of selection, helping us find those win conditions. We wouldn't mind Anticipate to go with our counter spells. We'll give it a shot here. But definitely hoping we get Omen Speaker on the way back, since that's a perfect card in this deck. Wall of Mist is a pretty good one too. There's also a chance we would play Invoke the Divine in this deck, just as a, an answer to potential problematic artifacts or enchantments. And the life gain is nice, but nice defensive body, definitely need those in this deck. And even though we might end up with a small artifact theme and one with a machine could draw us a few cards, I think we have to prioritize the early defense here, otherwise we're just not going to get to the late game to begin with. Alright, here some good ones. Revitalize, as a Scatter, Dwindle would all be cards I'm very happy to play in this deck. Question is, which one do we prioritize? It's probably not to Revitalize, since that just cycles and gains a bit of life. As a Scatter and Dwindle, great answers to opposing creatures. So which one do we prefer? Essence Scatter is the cheaper answer, don't have lots of 2-drops, uh, so having a turn 2 play would be nice. But of course we can't use Essence Scatter retroactively on creatures that already resolved. So Dwindle has that upside going for it. So it's definitely a close pick. Given that we're in blue-white and there's a chance we might get some Luminous Bonds, we might want to prioritize the Essence Scatter and then 
Hope to pick up some dwindles and luminous bonds later. Think that's reasonable. All right. Now I think we prefer the chaplain just so that we can punish one toughness creatures a bit better. Sleep would just maybe bias a turn or two if we've got a patient rebuilding or a uh, psychic erosion going, but that's not enough. We just need to have blockers in play and then we need to survive more than just a one turn. And since we're not a beatdown deck, sleep doesn't actually do much. Assassin Scatter, on the other hand, totally fine card, and we're happy to have more copies. And alright, some decent options here too. Disperse, Anticipate, Revitalize would all be cards I'm uh, happy with. So we don't have any cheap interaction like Disperse yet, and we're a bit lacking in the creature removal department other than having counter spells, so having something to bounce a creature that's already resolved to maybe be able to counter it on the way back would be pretty nice. So I think I like that over Anticipate and Revitalize, even though these would be nice cards to fill out our deck with, so when we're holding up a counter spell, if the opponent doesn't make us uh, counter anything, we can just cast Anticipate or Revitalize instead to get a small advantage. But we'll go with the Disperse now. Alright, now we can have a second Disperse. Don't know if we're gonna play the second Disperse since our deck is a little bit lacking in terms of card advantage. If we had more Divinations, Sifts, other sources of card advantage, then playing Disperse has less of a drawback. But of course, if you Disperse one of the opponent's creatures, they can just replay it and you're down a card. You're just up a bit of a tempo by making the opponent recast their spells. So we might actually want a second Dwarven Priest now that we look at it more. Just as another good blocker, gains us a bit of life. Yeah, I think I can get behind that. Alright, so we wield cancel out of the first pack. So probably gonna take it now. Alright, perfect. So both Omen Speaker and Anticipate Wield. I think we prefer Omen Speaker. For the most part, it's an upgrade over Wall of Mist. And yeah, we definitely like to have that early card selection. And I'll take Invoke the Divine, there's a chance we play it. And I think we prefer Vitalize over Totally Lost, although Totally Lost can also be good. It's kind of like a an expensive Disperse, but you're not down on uh, card advantage at least. But Revitalize plays well with our counter spells. gaining a bit of life can be useful. Gets us closer to our win conditions, plus it also triggers Psychic Corrosion, so it has a little bit of synergy there too. It is true that Totally Lost plus Patient Rebuilding is a pretty nice combo since you can put the card on top and then make a mill it. So the creature is gone for good. Or the non-land permanent is gone for good. But once we have a Patient Rebuilding in play we probably are doing fine. So I'm not too concerned with uh, that scenario. So I think I still take the Revitalize. Take a Wall of Mists, already have a 6-drop in uh, Sea Serpent, don't need another one. Probably not gonna play the Line Breaker, but I will happily play more Revitalizes. Alright, so headed into pack 3, we're still looking for some of those enchantments like Dwindle and Luminous Bonds. Could use a bit of extra card draw, so Divination pretty high up on our list. And what did we open? There's Uncomfortable Chill, which cycles and Shrinks down opposing creatures, but there's also Salvager of Secrets, which can get back one of our counter spells, can get back Disperse. So, seems like a pretty good one here. Over the Totally Lost, which we might uh, play if we get it on the wheel, but not a very high pick. Ooh, it's uh, a murder, but can't really take it here. We were still looking for some artifacts synergies to enable the skill animator and the scholar of stars. So Aviation Pioneer would be one of the first artifacts we get to our deck, so it's probably worth it here. Of course, Pegasus Course are a much better card, but we're drafting a, a weird defensive deck that's not really looking to attack all that much, so we're less interested in the Courser's ability. So let's take the Pioneer. Open the Dwindle, 
mirror image and alteration. Uh, mirror image and alteration are doing similar things, but alteration has the upside that it can be used as a a weird removal spell on opposing creatures as well. Dwindle is a cleaner removal spell than the alteration is, since you don't need to have a smaller creature in play to be able to select. So between Dwindle and Alteration, I think I prefer Dwindle, even though it's one mana more expensive, just because it doesn't require the setup of having a weaker creature in play. Let's say the opponent just has two big creatures in play, then Alteration does nothing unless we have a small creature in play, whereas Dwindle always works. And then there's also Gearsmith Guardian, which we would hope to get on the wheel to have an extra artifact. The upside on Alteration is potentially higher, whereas Dwindle's the more consistent card. Fine, we'll uh, give it a shot. There's Meandering River, number two, as more mana fixing. Could also take another Scholar of Stars, but again, we're kind of lacking in the artifact department. Could also take the Drake, just have a flyer that we can trade off with opposing flyers. Don't think we're splashing red for Electrify. All right, perfect. Divinations, the type of card we were looking for. Bit of card advantage, a nice sorcery to get back with our 5-drop here. The uh, Salvager of Secrets. And makes cards like uh, Disperse less painful, since we can get a bit of card advantage to make up for it. Alright, now we have to decide between Apparatus and Uncomfortable Chill. Apparatus would be a removal spell to get rid of smaller creatures. Does play well with counterspells, since you can keep up 3 mana, if the opponent plays something into your counterspell, you can counter, otherwise you can sacrifice the apparatus afterwards on a smaller creature. And it's also an artifact for uh, the different artifact synergies we have in our deck, which we're still not sure if we're going to play those cards or not, but it makes it more likely that we do. We could take a Field Creeper to have an extra artifact, and not uh, too thrilled about it, but maybe it's good enough. Don't think we're really going to miss out on a second Disperse. And it's probably too late to pick up Highland Lake to splash any red cards. Alright, we got our late Luminous Bonds in the end. So, the final pack where we could have opened the Luminous Bonds, there it is. So that's an easy pickup for us here. And now we get to decide between Totally Lost and Uncomfortable Chill. Alright, so for being realistic, are we going to play the Artifact sub-theme? Apparatus I'm happy to play. Um, Aviation Pioneer I'm relatively happy to play, and Gearsmith Guardian's fine. So that's three Artifacts. So I don't think that's enough to make uh, the... Scholar of Stars and the Skilled Animator, worth it. So we'll probably end up cutting those. Field Creeper can go. One of the walls might get cut. Um, Pioneer could also be cuttable, Scholar could be cuttable. Probably not main decking Invoke the Divine. Don't know if we need both Dwarven Priests, or if we need Bone to Ash. So something like this could be okay, probably don't even need the Serpents, but... Uncomfortable Chill is probably okay, but there's a chance we don't end up uh, playing either. Alright, wheel the Pack Beasts. I guess that's a slight upgrade over Tolarian Scholar. Although, now we got a second Guardian, so who knows? Maybe the uh, artifact sub-theme could still work. Alright. Let's take a look at our deck. So Serpent's not really necessary. With uh, Angel, Corrosion, and Rebuilding, we should have enough win conditions anyway. That we don't really need the Serpent as well. And as far as blockers go, a 5-5 is probably good enough. So... I still don't think we have enough artifacts for the... Scholar of Stars and for the Skilled Animator 
turning a Gearsmith Guardian into a 5-5 doesn't really do much. So Animator is probably not worth it still. Yeah, our deck is a little bit weak to flying creatures, that's true. So those will be a priority for our removal spells. Did not end up with many flyers ourselves. I also don't think Scholar of Stars is going to be good enough if we're only going to have three or four artifacts in our deck. Could also play a Bone to Ash if we wanted to. So that's a consideration. Could also play a second uh, Dwarven Priest if we wanted to. Um, do we want Aviation Pioneer or do we prefer Trusty Pack Beast? Trusty Pack Beast is not a blue creature for Gearsmith Guardian, but it is a creature that can potentially get back a Gearsmith Guardian from the graveyard. Also plays well with the Explosive Apparatus. I think we prefer the Pack Beast in general over the Pioneer, although Pioneer making a 1 1 flyer could be useful. But it's not like a 1 1 flyer is really going to block all that much other than opposing 1 1 flyers. Doesn't block the Rustwing Falcon, doesn't block any bigger creatures. I think uh, Pioneer is probably cuttable. Since we don't care about artifacts, it's just a blue creature for a guardian that we would care about. If we had more artifacts and we had the skilled animator, then of course it would be a good combo with Pioneer. But Pioneer being the only good card to really combine with uh, animator in, in our entire deck, I don't think is enough to make us uh, play it. So then we still need to make one cut. And what is that going to be? We could just cut our Vitalize, since it just cycles anyway. Uh, could just be the Bone to Ash. So Bone to Ash is cuttable, Revitalize is cuttable. I think we prefer the second Gearsmith Guardian over the second Dwarven Priest, given the other cheap uh, defensive creatures we have, like Chaplain, Omen Speaker and Wall of Mist. But we're definitely low in terms of uh, how many creatures we have. Yeah, we could also cut Revitalize and Bone to Ash to make room for an extra Priest. Could see that just to have an extra blocker, since we're a bit lacking in terms of uh, how many creatures we have otherwise. So keep in one Revitalize. Alright, I think this is pretty much our deck. Let's take a quick look at our mana distribution. Definitely have more blue than white. The only double white card is Angel. So let's see. Definitely want double blue for Cancel, so we probably want around 11-12 blue sources at least. So 10 islands to Meandering River would be enough. So it's going to be difficult to have triple white for Angel. So maybe we get a bit greedy and go 9 islands, 6 planes. Might make it a bit more difficult to cast our cancels on curve, but makes it more realistic to get to activate the Angel. And it's not like we need to play the Angel on turn 3, even if we play it later it's still fine. But we just want to have triple white at some point. Picture shall be patient rebuilding. Let's go. This hand seems fine. Turn two we get to keep up anticipate and assassin scatter. Or we could just play Wall of Mist. I guess it's okay to play a Wall of Mist here. Yeah, it's fine. Like, the Wall of Mist is gonna block most two drops the opponent could play here. Unless they somehow happen to have a a two mana flyer. Alright. Let's just play the corrosion before they get their own counter spell. In case they're a more controlling deck. And then we can just sit on our counter spells all day. So flyer here would be unfortunate. All right, it's too bad. But turn three, psychic corrosion can also potentially outrace a blood letter. So I'll say go. And then we can anticipate plus Assassin Scatter. Definitely countering that one, but we can anticipate first. Alright, Gearsmith Guardian, I guess is okay. Alright. So we can play Chaplain, keep up Cancel, overplaying Guardian. Since I don't think we're on the plan of trying to race the opponent, even though Gearsmith Guardian would be a 5-5. Keeping up cancel in case they have another flyer here probably seems fine, and then the Chaplain could potentially get in some lifelink as well. Epicure. I don't think we counter that, since it gets blocked by the Wall of Mist. 
The only downside is of course that the chaplain doesn't get to gain one life now, but that's okay. We'll find an answer to the blood ladder eventually. So playing Gearsmith Guardian doesn't really accomplish all that much. Definitely still want to play our lands in case we find more card draw. We'll need plenty of lands in play. And then wait until we can uh, maybe play the Guardian and keep up Cancel. Definitely want to counter that one. Ooh, they have a counter spell back. That's bad. Alright. Well, now we're facing a pretty fast clock in the air. And again, our deck has very few flyers, so this is going to be rough. Yep, and there's Asa Scatter a bit late. So probably want to still keep up Asa Scatter just in case. We're going to have to draw a White Source plus Resplendent Angel here to have a chance. Seems unlikely. Opponent sells 18 cards left, so... I guess if we stream together like a Divination plus something else... We could get there. Sure. Hey, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub there. Alright, so Luminous Bonds was a good draw. I think the way we prevent the most damage is just by chum blocking the Epicure with the Chaplain, and then using Luminous Bonds on a Blood Ladder right now also lets us keep up Assassin Scatter. And then next turn we can play Guardian to check the Epicure. So now we're only taking two a turn. Hard Blade. Probably have to counter that one. Hey, thanks for the subscription there. Zero to Z, welcome to the Loyal Legion to you as well, my friend. Let's have some more hype in chat. Alright, Disperse was a good one. So, still gonna play the Guardian first, I believe. To block the Epicure. Hope they don't have removal for it. We'll take two down to four. Although bouncing, Bloodletter not the best since they get to trigger the Epicure as well. But it could potentially buy us a turn. Pack Beast, what do you get? Nothing. Alright, let's play a Pack Beast. Your opponent's got 10 cards left. Don't think we're gonna survive 5 turns without some help. So, I think we still take 2 since... Hmm, opponent also splashing white apparently. Who knows what that is for. I guess we can take a look at their deck in the meantime. So yeah, we don't know what the white is for, so they could still have a white card in their hand or deck. So yeah, dispersing the blood ladder, they just replay it, we lose one life from the trigger plus another one from the Epicure. So essentially just makes the opponent spend three mana. So I think we keep disperse for now, but we might have to do it next turn. If we pick up a counter spell in the meantime, we can counter the blood ladder on the way back. Just a land. Alright, so now we're probably dead. Um yeah, I don't think we have any outs here. Other than our opponent tapping a bunch of mana before attacking and then dispersing Blood Letter, drawing a counter spell next turn. We would have had double white for Angel, so had we drawn our Angel in the meantime, we could have potentially uh, cast it. So I have to hope our opponent taps a bunch of mana before the attack. Alright, GG's. So yeah, our opponents playing the turn 3 flyer when we were shields down our counter spells essentially made the difference since that one blood ladder got in for at least 10 damage. So flyers are definitely the weakness of our deck and our opponent playing one on turn 3 was uh, our demise. Alright, there we go. This hand seems great. 
Turn 3 Corrosion, Revitalize and Divination to help us trigger it. Don't have any defensive creatures, but with all the card draw we'll probably draw into one at some point. Alright, got a counterspell. Don't really want to run Corrosion into an opposing cancel. Opponent also with Revitalize. Alright, got a bit of a mirror match. Wall of Mist, sure. So now we get to tap out for Corrosion. Hope they don't have Invoke the Divines in their deck. Ooh, Resplendent Angel. It's pretty tempting too. But eh, I think we'll Corrosion first. The Angel probably just gets dwindled or answered by Illuminous Bonds. Oof. Alright. Well, that's uh, what you get for tapping out for Corrosion. I guess we got a bit greedy. We could have waited until turn 6 to play Corrosion, keep up Cancel, but of course getting it in play sooner when we have Divination and Revitalize in hand has a big upside as well. We could also draw some cards, hope to draw into Disperse or Luminous Bonds. I guess if we draw into the Alteration, we could potentially turn War Leader into Wall of Mist. Alright, I can buy that. So we shouldn't have played our land first in case we draw another Meandering River. Alright. Gearsmith Guardian's pretty good here since that blocks the War Leader for the time being. But our opponent's gonna get a nice hidden. So they're on straight up uh, three colors here. Novice Knight's fine. And a Wall of Vines is fine too. Ooh, our opponent might be playing Arcadus now that I think about it. Ooh, Disperse was a good one. All right, I think we're okay. So we might see Arcadus make an appearance in the graveyard pretty soon here. Alright, so our opponent's got counter spell mana up, so there's no point in main phasing the Disperse. We might as well do it on our upkeep. We can Disperse the War Leader, counter it with Cancel, next turn play a blocker to deal with the uh, tokens. That's fine. So let's pass a turn. And then upkeep, I think, will bounce. Don't want them to draw into a counter spell, even though I don't think they play many counter spells to begin with. I don't think they'll play any enchantments on the War Leader. They might tap out, but we kind of want them to replay the War Leader this turn since we've got the uh, cancel. So if their play is just replaying the War Leader, that's totally fine. Alright. So let's see what they've got. Then the Salvager of Secrets can also get back the. Uh, Disperse from the graveyard, potentially. So we're down to 12. They might play something else, but nope, they replayed the War Leader. Alright. So War Leader got dealt with. There's a Dwindle. Could tap out for a Splendent Angel. And then we can still Revitalize, that seems good. And then next turn threaten to pump up the Angel. Opponent's got two cards in hand. They might not have an answer in hand to the Angel, which can just take over the game by itself. Gives us an alternate angle of attack. Could have also cast Revitalize before playing the Angel, but now we represent having another Counterspell, which might change their play. If our opponent plays an Arcadus here, we could be in a bit of trouble. Knight Splash on the Novice Knight, sure. All right, just a novice knight for four. Nope, the tokens as well. So they could have a pump spell here, but don't really want to be taking two. And a sentinel. All right, that's acceptable. So we should be able to deal with this. Provide lion end of turn.
mill depot and some more. And now we've got quite a few options since we could just activate the Resplendent Angel. All right, still no Arcadas milled. I mean, it's not guaranteed their opponents playing Arcadas, but just seeing these random Wall of Vines and Wall of Mists makes me uh, pretty suspicious. We're one mana short of Salvager and Cancel. We could Salvager, get back Disperse, and then have Disperse for the Novice Knight, which is nice. But I think we prefer just making a 4-4 token at that point. So I think just bumping the Angel, there's not much our opponent could have for 2 mana other than the Rune Disperse. Making a 4-4 seems nice. We also get to gain a bunch of life. So let's not uh, make it too complicated. Alright, so we got our Angel, we gained 5, we're at 15. Facing a 4-powered Novice Knight as our only threat. So next turn we can Salvager, get back Disperse, keep up Cancel, or we could just activate the Angel once again. So we can just activate the Angel once again. Opponent is down to 9 cards though, so... Maybe just playing a Salvager, getting back Disperse, and then keeping up Cancel Disperse is fine. Or we can just get back Cancel, since it's not like we're going to lose to the Novels Knight, since we can just double block it with Angel and Salvager. That's probably the safest play we can make. So we'll just uh, attack for 4 with the regular Angel, which has Vigilance. Might as well keep Resplendent Angel on defense, just in case, since... We're gonna win with Corrosion before we win with damage, likely. Could also get back Divination to mill the opponent for more, but I think if we have two cancels in hand, there's no way we can lose. Wanna make sure to have a double blue up. Since if we're ahead on board and we have two counter spells in hand, there's not much your opponent could draw. And I'm happy double blocking the Novice Knight with the Salvager and the 4 4 Angel token, and her opponent has seen enough. Alright, sweet, so we'll never know if her opponent had Arcadus in their deck. Sweet, so we're 1 1. And we've got our first patient rebuilding siding here. This hand's okay. Got Pack Beast as an early blocker, cancels counterspell, alteration as removal spell. Work our way up towards 5 mana for rebuilding to take over the game. Yeah, tapping out for the Psychic Corrosion on turn 3 was definitely not without any risk. Another blue white matchup. Don't think it's worth it to tap out for Pack Beasts, since there's so many flying creatures I could play here. Yep. I think we still ask and scatter since we might have to cancel a non-creature spell this game. Keep up cancel. Snapping Drake. Yeah, let's cancel that one. If we draw land for rebuilding, the game's pretty much over. Perfect. Unless your opponent is playing Invoke the Divine. They could also have Disperse plus Counterspell to counter rebuilding on the way back. That's fine. 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. Oh yes. Play a Pack Beast. Can cycle Revitalize. Could have cast it right now, but we might want to keep up Disperse. If they have Invoke for rebuilding, we can bounce it in response. That's okay. Let's take a look at what's milled. <laughs> and there's the Invoke the Divine. 
Alright, so dodge that bullet, but our opponent could of course have the Salvage of Secrets that can get back the Invoke the Divine. So we've got 6 mana. I do want to deal with the Sea Serpent here, can deal with it in a variety of ways. We can Alteration, turn it into an Exclusion Mage. We could Omen Speaker first, then Alteration. We could Divination here, we've got 6 mana. Could just Luminous Bonds it. I guess Divination plus Luminous Bonds is a pretty clean turn here. Sure, let's start there. All right. And then next turn we can maybe play the Gearsmith Guardian or we could just play Omen Speaker Anticipate, look for more counter spells to protect the patient rebuilding. Opponent down to 21 cards, we're at 21 as well, so if they deal with the rebuilding now, we would be kind of even, but we still have the Psychic Corrosion in our deck. Ooh, Tazeret. I think we can outrace Tazeret. They're just going to be making a bunch of 1-1 one -one Thopters, and by the time they can ultimate, they won't have many cards to be able to get with a ultimate ability. So I'm not too concerned about Tazeret. I guess Anticipate into Omen Speaker is a bit better. Alright, Salvager's good. So we can play Salvager, get back a Counterspell. We'll be Shields down for one turn, but the next turn we'll have a Counterspell that we can play, plus we have Disperse to maybe bounce something that resolves, like a Deseret, to counter it on the way back. Seems acceptable. And yeah, I think we like Cancel the most here. Alright, discard Tapland. So let's take another look at Tezzeret's Ultimate. On your end step you can search Library for a permanent card, put it on the battlefield. But yeah, if their Library is empty, there's not many permanents they can go get, so... I don't think we're too worried about Ultimate and the Thopters are not gonna get there in time. Opponent's milling a lot of land, so we're getting lucky with how many cards we're drawing with the Patient Rebuilding. But that also means that our opponent might be drawing spells. So want to leave up 3 mana for Cancel, which means we've got 5 mana to work with. Could just play Gearsmith Guardian, which blocks pretty well. Could go Omen Speaker, plus Apparatus, plus Disperse or Alteration. Don't need to Alteration anything at the moment. I think we'll go with the Gearsmith Guardian here. Although Omen Speaker can help us dig for Psychic Corrosion, maybe that's better. Since right now we're kind of equal in terms of how many cards we have. Alright, perfect. So next turn we'll, we'll be drawing the Corrosion. So let's play Apparatus. Keep up, Disperse and Cancel. Could cancel Tazeret right now, but again, we're not too worried about Tazeret. So I'm fine letting them uh, plus deserts a few more times. Mirror Image enters the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control, so they could copy Exclusion Mage, that's fine. They could copy Frilled Sea Serpent, which would be a little bit annoying, but we can just Alteration it next turn. I think that's okay. They're going for the cavalry. Maybe if they have like an inspired charge we could be in a bit of trouble. But end of turn we'll just use the apparatus here. So we'll take two. And I think we deal with the Thopter token. So we want to untap. I don't think we disperse desert, even though we could. Maybe that's fine. Just make them spend five mana again. So next turn we can play Psychic Corrosion. Yeah, it's probably fine. Play Psychic Corrosion plus play Gearsmith Guardian, for example. Have some more blockers out. 
Let's take another look. I guess we also wanted to keep up cancel here. Alright, so we probably just say go here. We've got one good blocker for the knights, one trades and one blocks. Yeah, I think I actually don't care about desert. They've got 10 cards left, these are gonna mill them quite quickly. So let's just play Guardian to shore up the ground. And let them replay Tazeret if they want to. And yeah, just one turn of rebuilding plus Psychic Erosion is gonna mill them almost entirely. Opponent's got seven lands in the graveyard, they've got seven lands in place, so presumably three lands left in either their hand or their library. Thanks with everyone. Alright, they did have the Inspired Charge. Well, good thing we uh, sort of played around it. I mean, of course, we could have just kept up Cancel to counter the Inspired Charge. But that's why I prefer to add an, an extra creature to the board and killing the Thopter token last turn. So close call here, almost uh, managed to kill us. Opponent's got two cards left, so we take a hit, untap, mill them, they draw their dead. And we've got cancel, so there's no way we can lose here, right? We're gonna take eight down to two at the very most. Could also alteration, but there's no real reason to. So I think we'll just uh, say go. Might as well. The stakes are clear now. So we draw. Opponent's got zero cards left in library. Can take an entire look at their uh, deck here. All right. Pass the turn. So in the end, it was a bit closer than it should have been had we just kept up cancel instead of playing the Gearsmith Guardian in the last turn. We would have been uh, a lot safer. Yeah, especially considering our opponent copied the Cavalry 4-drop instead of the Serpent. Inspired Charge should have definitely been on our radar a bit more. All right. So we're 2-1. Uh, the sand seems okay. Do we counter a Druid of the Cowl? I don't think we do. Alright, but I think we do tap out for Corrosion. The earlier the better. Hope they don't have Reclamation Sage. That's fine. All right. But I'll definitely keep up Asa Scatter instead of playing the Dwarven Priest now. And it's pretty much a race, Corrosion versus their creatures. Definitely a good Asa Scatter targets. Alright, do need to draw some action here, since Dwarven Priest and Disperse are not going to get the job done. Back up to 20. So our opponent appears to be on a pretty simple creature deck, probably green-black splashing white. And there's a flyer we're going to struggle with. Dispersing the Vampire Sovereign, also not the best idea. All right, those are some good cards. Probably want the patient rebuilding first. And then the disperse just needs to buy us a little bit of time. Corrosion plus rebuilding is gonna mill very quickly, so we're 
probably going to be able to outrace the Sovereign. And next turn we still get to keep up the Spurs so we don't have to use it end of turn there on the Archer. Alright. Let's rebuild patiently. Say go. And we may or may not end up using the Spurs on the Archer here, we'll see. Or on the Sovereign if they tap out main phase and then we can cancel it on the way back. Archer is definitely annoying since we can't actually block it all that well. We would have to double block it with our ground creatures and we would lose both. Plus our opponent gets to drain us for a bit with the Archer. I think we do go for the double block. Especially if they have some sort of pump spell here. We get to Disperse. Alright, so seems worth it to Disperse here. Set them back on tempo, so we won't be able to cancel the Sovereign. So now the plan is either to be faster than the Sovereign with our mill plan, or to draw Luminous Bonds or another answer to the Sovereign. Wow, so we didn't mill any land, so we didn't get to draw any extra cards with the Corrosion, that's unfortunate. Alright, that's not what we were hoping for. But our opponent is down to 11 cards already. So let's run back the double block. This is going to be a close one. So we're at 6, facing 4 power, but we get to draw hopefully some extra cards here. Alright, so only one extra card. They're down to 4. Let's take another look at their deck. Pretty normal looking green-black mid-range deck. We don't know what the white is for yet, so that's an uncertainty right now. So they could have some white card in hand, not sure which one that would be. Alright, let's uh, play the Guardian. Blocks the Rejuvenator at least. And we might need the extra land in play, you never know. Alright, so we're dead to a pump spell. Let's find out. So yeah, Patient Rebuilding mills 3 and then Corrosion mills at least 2. So we didn't need to get lucky. Alright, so that was a close call. 3 and 1. And a chance for glory. Yeah, flyers definitely our weakness. Another opening hand with corrosion. Two lands on the draw. Can probably keep this. But we'll need to draw some lands for sure. Turn to keep up Assassin Scatter. Don't think we play Apparatus quite yet. And then turn 3 we'll have to decide whether or not to uh, still keep up Assassin's Scatter or not. Falcon's okay since we can Apparatus it, not the most high impact uh, creature. Alright, so do we tap out for Corrosion? Opponent appears to be on an aggressive white deck. So it's all about being as fast as possible. So I think Corrosion's okay. And then next turn we get to Apparatus plus Assassin's Scatter or Anticipate. Like, what's a scary 3-drop our opponent could play? Like a Loxodon Linebreaker still dies to the Apparatus. Opponent is on red-white. Alright, they do go for the Night Splash, so now Apparatus no longer an answer, and now the Falcon's a lot scarier, but Luminous Bond's an excellent answer here. Alright, so we've got some decisions to make. Could just Luminous Bond's a Falcon right now. Those are two pretty good cars too. Or we could say go, take three from the Falcon, Assassin's Scatter their following creature, anticipate, untap, and then let's say we didn't have to use Assassin's Scatter and found a land with anticipate, we can play Luminous Bonds on Falcon and then still keep up Assassin's Scatter, which might be a bit safer. Taking three is probably still acceptable. So I think I'm gonna go with the anticipate Assassin's Scatter plan. 
So we'll say go. Motivator is probably okay. Drill master, I'll counter. All right, Resplendent Angel, but we don't have double white. Pack Beast could get back apparatus, but it's pretty slow. I think we just get the land. All right, perfect. Another asset scatter, so now we get to Luminous Bonds. The Falcon, keep up asset scatter. Now we're only scheduled to take one. So we're in a good spot. Salvager can also get back an asset scatter potentially. And no creature whatsoever. Well, I guess we change plan instead of playing a 5-drop, we can Divination, which triggers Corrosion twice. And try and find more land drops. I think that's okay. So we get to play Apparatus, Disperse is good insurance too. Can have another look here, so pretty aggressive red-white deck. No surprises. Play Apparatus, which we can use to maybe kill the Motivator next turn. So we'll just take one. Gonna save the Disperse. And now we get to play 5-drop, plus keep up Assassin's Scatter Disperse. And I think going for another Assassin Scatter is probably okay. Could also go for the Divination to mill them a bit faster. Could also be okay, I guess. Go for Salvager. Get back Divination. They probably have a removal spell for the Salvager, but that's okay. The main reason why I'm not also going for the Assassin Scatter is that the scariest card our opponent could have is something like a Heroic Reinforcements, which we can't even Assa Scatter. So two Assa Scatters aren't necessarily good enough, whereas Divination not only speeds up our clock with Corrosion, but potentially helps us find more answers to Heroic Reinforcements, like a Cancel. And yep, there's the Reinforcements. But we can now just Disperse one of the tokens to prevent a bit of damage if we want to, which is probably okay. So we'll block the Motivator, Disperse a token. And we'll Divination. Alright, didn't find any action there. But we're fine to just keep up uh, Scatter and Apparatus instead of tapping out for Guardian, I think. Opponent's down to 8 cards, so don't need much. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, so kind of dismantled the uh, red-white aggro deck there. So we're 4 and 1. Let's keep it up. And this hand's missing double blue for cancel. We can play Chaplain plus Alteration in the meantime. Don't have any of our win conditions in hand, but we do have double white in case we draw an Angel. So this one's kind of borderline, but we do have lands and spells, so I think we'll keep... Alright, interesting uh, spots. Could tap out for Chaplain turn 2, but it's not like Chaplain does much for us. So I think tapping out for River and then having Cancel to ready next turn might be better. Ooh, Deckhand. At least it still dies to the Alteration just fine here. So I think we'll uh, keep up Cancel for now and then next turn we can Alteration plus an auto 2 drop. Yep, definitely want to counter the flyer. Alright. So 
So yeah, we can just use this as a 2 mana removal spell for the deck hand. And then we'll play a chaplain. Could have also gone for the Wall of Mist to make Guardian to a 5-5, and yeah, opponent with all the evasive creatures here, which sadly is our weakness. So that's not what we were hoping to see. So we might have a race on our hands, and I don't love our chances, but we'll see. Our deck isn't really built to be very aggressive. Blanche would armor your Snapping Drake, alright, now if we draw... One of our other answers, we're in good shape. Disperse Luminous Bonds would be great here. Let's play Wall of Mist, turn Guardian into a 5-5. It's gonna be a close race, the life gain from the Highland game also very relevant here. So Blanchwood Armor right now, not much better than a Knight's Pledge. Let's keep countering the Flyers. Opponent has played uh, for an evasive creature so far. And now a Ghost Form as well, to make Highland game unblockable. But they only have one card left, so... With the right top deck, we might have a chance. Instead, it's a Plains. Alright, we're just uh, a Luminous Bonds away from stabilizing, though. And our opponent is already down to 8. The problem is the Snapping Drake is going to kill us in 2 turns. So it's gonna come down to our top deck here. Oof, sleep. Well, that's pretty effective. So now we're also just dead to the Highland game. And a trusty pack beast is not gonna do it here. Alright, well, our opponent had a very focused game plan, which was to get in tons of evasive damage. And it uh, worked out pretty well since that's our biggest weakness, so not too surprising. If we had a more normal, let's say, limited draw where you play a 2-drop, a 3-drop, a 4-drop, you try and curve out by playing some creatures, then the evasive creatures would not necessarily have uh, outrace stats, except for, of course, a sleep part, which would have uh, swung the game in their favor. Yeah, it's true, Aviation Pioneer would have uh, potentially saved us there, and we did play the Pack Beast over Aviation Pioneer, so yeah, maybe got punished for our card selection in hindsight, since the 1-2 the body would have blocked the Highland game, the 1-1 one, one token would have blocked uh, Drake. We would have still had to top deck an answer to the Drake afterwards, of course, so wasn't going to be a guaranteed victory, even if uh, we had Pioneer there. This hand's great, so we'll keep it. Turn 1 Apparatus doesn't really bother us too much. Turn 2 Child of Night, perfect. Plays into our Chaplain. Then we probably want a Divination here, just to hit our land drops so we can rebuilding on time. Bowden says go. Draw 2, perfect. Alright. So everything according to plan. Next turn we can play a priest. Ooh, suspicious bookcase. So that could make the Child of Night unblockable, but we have the apparatus as well. And now we've got the land 5, so the bookcase is definitely going to be an issue going late in the game, since it's again a way for the opponent to get an evasive damage, which we're pretty weak against. I guess what we can do is attack for the one with the chaplain and then apparatus the Child of Night. Possible we should have main phased the apparatus, but now we have a bit more flexibility with uh, whether we use it or not. But I think we will. Also could have tapped the planes to keep up a double blue to represent cancel a bit better. I 
All right, it's gonna be their own chaplain. That's fine. So we'll let uh, patient rebuilding do its thing, and then just try to survive at all costs. Ooh, Janice Pride mates. So that's gonna grow up to a three-three here. So we might have two luminous bonds that one. But for now, I think I like playing the Gearsmith Guardian since it blocks a chaplain, so they'll have to spend mana making their stuff unblockable to get in for damage. So point with a pretty synergistic life gain deck here. And a Vampire Sovereign, alright. So that's a good target for the Luminous Bonds. Opponent doesn't really have any great attacks, unless they want to suicide the chaplain just to have a 5-5 pride mate, which they could consider here. Alright, nice double asset scatter, wall of mist. So we hit three lands here, so we drew three cards from the rebuilding, which was pretty sweet. So let's... Uh, luminous bonds, the flyer, and then keep up double asset scatter. Could have also played one Wall of Mist to make Guardian up to a 5-5 here. Could have also been fine. Alright, so let's take another quick look. And we could just uh, play... Salvager to get back another Asset Scatter or Divination. And then we still get to keep up other Asset Scatter, or we could play Gearsmith Guardian and keep up Asset Scatter. I think I like that more. I doubt we'll go on the beatdown plan, but it's an option. Sovereign Spites, Pride Mate to 5 5. I think we still outrace them with the rebuilding here, but who knows if they just start making the Pride Mate unblockable, they might be able to get there. They targeted the Chaplain instead, alright, that's much better for us, I think. Sure, now the Pride Mate is potentially big enough to block the Guardians, but we're on the mill plan here and Corrosion's perfect, <laughs> and a Resplendent Angel too. Alright, so let's play Corrosion. Play Angel. Keep up as a scatter, I think. And now we can also just uh, gain a bit of life with our resplendent angel. But yeah, the angel's kind of an afterthought at this point. Don't really need it. The suspicious bookcase is the scariest card right now, since it can threaten to get in for some unblockable damage with the pride mate. Opponent's got 12 cards left, but those are gonna disappear rather quickly. A uh, Pack Beast can get back Fountain. I think that's acceptable. Fountain doesn't really do much other than growing Pride Mates one or two times before they're dead. Yeah, we also have Salvager into Divination still to melt them. Replace Fountain. Alright, we should be in good shape here. Yeah, with uh, the Divination... If we hit two lands, we mill them for sure. If we hit one land, I think they'll have one card remaining. But I don't really see them dealing uh, 15 damage next turn. Alright, so we... Still have seven cards left, so if we draw two, we mill for four. So they would have three cards remaining. So Salvager into Divination would not be lethal unless we draw into... even more card draw but we would need to draw into two card draw spells, which seems unlikely. We've got a Revitalize, and I think that's about it. So I don't think that's the plan. Playing Priest also triggers a Resplendent Angel, so that's got to be pretty sweet here. 
I guess we can play the Wall of Mist first then. Make an Angel end of turn. We're at 21. Don't think they're dealing 21 damage here through an Essence Scatter. And next turn we're guaranteed to uh, mill them out pretty much with the divination in the graveyard. All right, GG's. So patient rebuilding claims another victim. This time we were able to contest the flyer and they weren't aggressively using the bookcase. Maybe had they started using bookcase on the pride mate a bit earlier they could have gotten in just enough damage but I doubt it. All right, so we're five and two. Let's see if we can go the distance here. All right, got another opening hand with Patient Rebuilding. Omen Speaker to find white mana for Luminous Bonds and to hit our land drops. Seems good. Green-white could be a pretty aggressive deck. Alright, I think we'll keep the Divination, can draw two and try to find lands that way instead. Since we didn't really have a great play lined up for this turn, opponent missing a land drop. That's good for us. Alright, no planes yet, but I guess we don't really need it at this point. Might as well get in for one in case they somehow deal with the... Patient rebuilding and we have to go on damage plan. Cancel a good pickup here, so we're looking good. Next turn we can play the rebuilding. <laughs> Pretty far away from casting the angel here, but that's okay. Alright, hope to dodge Reclamation Sages, Naturalizes, and Invoke the Divines. Alright, that's fine. Alright, so far so good. And found a Plains, perfect. And a Cancel, alright, we're doing great. So we can play Pack Beast to trade for Basilisk, keep up Cancel, seems good. And if we don't need to cancel, we can anticipate. Yeah, probably want to counter that one. Could also Luminous Bonds it, but this is pretty mana efficient. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the argument would be to save maybe Counterspell for a flying creature or for an answer to rebuilding but they don't appear to have an answer to rebuilding and we've got a Luminous Bonds anyway for a flyer as well, so I think we're okay. Yeah, we probably can't afford to play the Priest anyway here. And then still keep up Asa Scatter. Don't really need to anticipate as well. Sure. And I don't think we bother attacking. And if we don't need to Asa Scatter, we can anticipate. So they've got three cards left in hand, they appear to be on an aggressive green-white deck maybe with some auras, and what's up with people playing Reliquary Tower? Please don't play Reliquary Tower, do everyone and mostly yourself a favor. Don't play Reliquary Tower, just don't. Alright, there's a Druid, probably worth an Assassin Scatter, don't know how much out of hand this can get. And a Luminous Bonds, alright. Find a plane so we can play our Angel. So we might get to make a token next turn with a second Dwarven Priest. Ooh, we could even... Hmm. I guess we'll make the sweet play here. We'll turn Omen Speaker into another Resplendent Angel. So we could have also attacked for three if we wanted to, but don't really need to. 
And next turn we'll get to make two angel tokens. Sure. Let's just get a plane so we can activate the angel. Yeah, I guess we'll win with damage here. It's probably fine. Alright, GG's. Opponent got a bit unlucky at the start. Yeah, we could have also played the Priest and not attack. Would have played around a random instant speed removal spell that they didn't have in hand. Alright, so we're 6 and 2. Let's see if we can win the last one. Alright, on the play with a one lander, I don't think we can keep. Alright, this is a bit better. Missing double blue. Could go either way. If we keep it on top and then flood out, we're gonna feel bad. If we bottom it and then draw a bunch of spells, we're gonna feel bad. I think we'll keep it. Just want to slow them down a bit here. And drew an island, so if we top deck patient rebuilding we'll be happy, but there's a good chance we might flood out a bit here. That's fine. They overpaid for the wall of vines. Alright, they also have a sentinel, that's okay. Alright. I think we still tap out for the priest here. At 4 mana they could have like a stag, that's pretty scary. But for the most part we want to keep cancel for bigger creatures later in the game. Alright, perfect, so back in business. That was quite the top deck. A Knight's Pledge, okay. Still just on a ground creature, so we have more ways to deal with that than on a flyer. Assassin Scatter is great. Okay, we're definitely doing it now. So let's play another Priest, keep up Assassin Scatter. <laughs> yeah, that's not patient rebuilding. <laughs> that's a pretty hasty rebuilding indeed. So we can still take 4 for now, make it more likely to double block the sentinel. Alright, so we'll still have to take a bit of uh, damage from the sentinel, but that's okay. Got plenty of counter spells in hand, disperse is great. So we could even chum block the sentinel if we wanted to. Since we know we've got a disperse coming up. Yeah, we did our opponent a favor, otherwise they would have drawn three lands. So it's really a win-win situation. Alright. We even have the option of dispersing the Knight's Pledge and then blocking the Sentinel. Ooh, Seder Enchanter. I think we'll counter that one. You never know how many enchantments they're holding. Luminous Bonds. Alright. So now I think we let that happen and then just bounce the Sentinel here. Which they can't replay. So that's gonna set them back quite a bit. Gives us all the time in the world. Well, if the, the bots pass all these Luminous Bonds late, then I guess drafting a Seder Enchanter deck might not be the worst idea. Also have a Cleansing Nova. So they had a decent deck. I 
that's the third Ajani we've seen in uh, the past uh, two drafts, which seems like a bit much, but at least we had the cancel for it this time. I guess the bots really don't like uh, picking white cards. Alright, nine cards remaining. Alright, Oaken Form is not bad. I think we'll take five for now. Alright, now I wish we had Chum blocked so we could have gotten back the Guardian. That's okay. We'll just play Salvager, get back a Cancel, double block, Sentinel. Seems good. Could also get a Disperse, but Cancel plays around whatever top deck they could have. And I guess it also makes Guardian into a 5-5, so that's good. Don't have to play the Pack Beast here, but might as well. Alright, so the patient rebuilding top deck into drawing three cards right away was uh, quite a thing. Two Seder Enchanters and quite a few Auras, so their uh, deck looked quite synergistic. Sweet, so ended up with uh, seven wins eventually. Lost uh, two games to decks with lots of flyers. The one where they had double blood ladder early and then the one where almost every creature they played had uh, some sort of evasion whether it was flying or unblockable so yeah those were going to be the, the rough matchups but any deck that relies on grand creatures to get in for damage we're going to have a decent matchup against i think let's claim our prize crack some packs so if this were like a pack one pick one what do we take Uh, size, okay, but there's not that many artifacts in the sets. Like, there's some cards that make artifacts, but they won't trigger Psy. So I think I just prefer the Heroic Reinforcements, pack one, pick one still, even though it's a double color card. It's super strong when it works. And here... Sigil Sword is quite strong. Like, it can be awkward if you put in just as a 2-3 blocker, for example, that blocks all your knight tokens. But if you can back this up with some pump spells and combo tricks, then it's uh, very powerful. Stag is also great, Nightly Vall is great. And here... I guess it would be a debate whether or not you like the green decks and you take Bounty, or if you like the blue decks and you take Campaign. Alright. So that was a pretty successful draft. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always... Have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.